Have you ever wondered why birds fly in formation? They do this to save energy. This is because a bird's wing produces lift, and as a result, the high pressure below the wing and low pressure above circulates and moves the air around, thereby wasting energy. So to minimize this loss, birds fly in formation, thereby collectively benefiting from one another's wingtip vortices. In fact, theory suggests that this efficiency gain can extend a bird's flight range by 70%. Applying this strategy to man-made aircraft is not a new concept. Scientists have investigated applying the same formation flight principles to aircraft since World War I, and in 1949, the concept went even further in an experiment where engineers physically attached the wingtips together. Now, you might ask why formation flight isn't used in commercial aircraft operations today. After all, the routes that aircraft take today are largely the same. So while this is achievable in coordinated flight tests, pulling this off on a larger scale becomes difficult due to inherent safety risks of flying within a wingspan of other aircraft. But with small, unmanned, and fully autonomous aircraft beginning to fill more and more commercial and defense applications, there is potential to apply formation flight to these highly automated UAV networks. Now, pulling this off is certainly difficult from a precision and positioning standpoint, and would likely vary depending on the specific platform. But an equally important problem that I will be focused on for the rest of this video is the question of coordination and path planning for a network of aircraft flying in formation, which is more generalizable, and is agnostic to individual platforms whether they are geese or fixed-wing vehicles. Building an algorithm that can solve this problem will provide key quantitative insights to the increased mission effectiveness that a network of vehicles has in any application, whether it be increased delivery range in package delivery or greater coverage in reconnaissance military applications. To solve it, we'll need to build a path planning algorithm that is able to find the optimal path given a set of starting goal nodes. But first, let me explain some of the challenges and factors to consider. Let's assume we are solving the problem of package delivery, and we have three warehouses, each with their own drone and package to be delivered to their respective and independent delivery locations. The simplest thing to do is we could fly each drone directly to their respective delivery site. But knowing that we can get some efficiency gain from flying together as a formation, we could instead join together at some rendezvous point and break off before heading to the delivery site. But a good question is, where do the vehicles connect? And should they connect? And where do they break off? Because for drones 1 and 3, they must fly a greater total distance as a result of joining together. But what if the start and goal points aren't so simple, and we have multiple warehouses and drones? Or what if there are flight restrictions, such as some obstacles which the drones aren't allowed to fly over? How do we know what the optimal strategy is to connect to other drones flying in the area? And how do we influence the flight paths in a way that collectively benefits the entire network? These are all of the questions that we can answer by building a path planning algorithm. Because unlike geese, drones can communicate with one another irrespective of how far apart they are and we have computers that can efficiently determine the optimal paths to take, which makes this a particularly unique problem to solve. And it can be solved in a number of ways. To explain the method that I came up with, let's first simplify the problem to just a single vehicle. How can we path plan this vehicle to get from the start point to the goal point in the most efficient way? Or in this case, the path that uses the least total distance. To solve this, there are a number of existing algorithms, such as Dijkstra's A-star or RRT-star, each of which have their own pros and cons depending on the application. In this case, I've chosen to use RRT-star. To explain this algorithm simply, RRT-star works by randomly generating points and connecting them to the closest available node. Each time a point is created, a check is made to verify it does not obstruct an obstacle. And nodes placed in the vicinity are reconnected based on whether the path is shorter using the new node. 
This process continues until a specified number of nodes are placed on the map. Now, typically from here, we would have our final path, which we would then use to follow using our simple airplane model. But because on this initial pass, the neighborhood radius used to reconnect new nodes was small, I go back and redo the map using the same nodes. But this time, the neighborhood radius that checks for shorter paths to reconnect new nodes covers the full map. So in the end, every path to a node is truly the shortest using the available nodes. With this pseudocode in place, I then went to Python and coded this routine, using Pygame for the visualization. Because I want to have multiple drones flying on the map, the algorithm needs to be able to support multiple start points. To guarantee that each drone shares the same potential rendezvous and breakoff points, when we build the second tree, rather than placing new nodes, I instead reuse the nodes from the first tree. I then take these nodes and rerun the second tree's RRT star algorithm using them instead of new nodes. Because I want to determine paths that the two drones can fly along, I then take each node that was placed from the first tree and directly connect them to all the other nodes on the map. From here, I check the cost of every single possible flight path that the two drones can take, whether they be to fly direct paths to their own goal or to fly with other drones, thereby saving power and reducing the total cost to fly for that leg of the journey. In this case, I've made it so that the power saving is 30%. And really what I mean by this is that when the cost of a line segment is calculated, I reduce its length value by 30%. For each of these potential paths, I calculate the associated cost and store it. Using all of these paths and costs, I choose the combination of paths that produces the minimum total cost out of all of the stored paths. Now, there are multiple combinations that a given number of drones can take to fly with one another. For two drones, there are only two combinations, fly alone or fly together. For three drones, there are five combinations, because all three could connect to one another, or only two could connect while the third drone stays independent, or all three could simply stay independent. For four drones, there are 15 combinations, for five drones, there's close to 60 combinations, and so on and so on. And so, after about 1200 lines of code and a lot of head banging, this is the final result. Now, what's cool about this is that if we vary the cost saving for flying in a formation, for the same set of nodes and paths, we can see the effect that this has on the flight paths. So if we set the cost saving to 0%, we see the path being direct from the start to the goal nodes. But if we adjust the saving to be as little as 5%, we then see the paths already choose to join one another. And as this power saving increases, we see the paths choose to join one another more quickly but not without flying a greater total distance. So this is to say that even for a small power saving of just 5%, the paths are already affected. Now, this conclusion will of course depend on the exact location of the start and goal points in the specific application. So the full understanding of the impact that formation flight power saving can have on the final paths will require a further sensitivity analysis. Achieving formation flight on small, unmanned aircraft could yield benefits like extended range for package delivery, thereby reducing the quantity of warehouses, or increased delivery range in military resupply. And with the highly automated paradigm of UAVs already operating today and continuing to grow, the application and potential benefits of formation flight deserves a revisit. So that's it for now. I hope you liked it. 
Thanks for watching. Bye.